welcome back and I'm here with uh, John Bruce, the family business guy. We're talking about meetings and with family businesses and I was asking, and just in the break, you said, well, I'll jot down a few points for you of uh, things to look out for. <laughs> and I was actually amazed because you just went scribble, scribble, and I'm like going, goodness me. What are some of the points you said that you have to look um, out for? Look, things that I'm always aware of, I try to be present, constant, through the, move, through, through the meeting. Mm. Um, depending on how many people are in the room, depending on the purpose of the meeting, I'm looking for body language. I'm listening to the tone of the voices. I'm listening to the silence, because some people stop talking and then there is the pregnant pause. Um, good point, that. The one about silence is a good point. Yeah. yeah, because quite often you'd be in a conversation, wouldn't you, and then someone stops talking. Someone else may be talking, but your observation is, why did you? Why have you suddenly turned either off or gone silent? It sure, might, and yeah. in these family meetings, assuming there's more than three people in the room, yeah. uh, you really want to have one conversation. You don't mm. want to have two or three conversations going on. It means that those others that aren't involved in the main conversation, they're not listening to the stuff that they need to be yeah. hearing. Mm. So who, who's listening? Um, as an advisor, I need to be listening myself, so I need to be involved in it. Um, mm. I want to pick out where the power is in the room. Oh. I want to pick out who's, who's actually running things, because it can be just the gesture, just the look. And you know, okay, there was something that went on there that nobody else may have seen, or something between one or two people. Um, know when to t call time out. So if there's something going on that you want to take a break, you can call mm. time out and say, okay, hang on, let, let's just take a moment here and we're, we're getting a bit stuck or there's somebody getting a little bit emotional. We need to just find out where we're going here. Is that where the, those types of things, you know, uh, watching the power play in the room and watching the, you know, knowing when to call a time out, is that the skill set you've just built up? I know you had your own family business, obviously you've experienced it firsthand. Um, <laughs> But is that just because of the years you've been doing this now that you kind of intuitively start to, those subtleties, almost unsaid subtleties that you pick up on? Yeah, look, I've been doing this for over 20 years, 30 yeah. years. Um, and uh, when you're running meetings, you get used to it. There, there's a, uh, the simple corporate meeting, which is, uh, we're here for this reason, let's get through it and everybody's in a hurry to get out of the meeting so yeah. bang 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 you cover it you know who's accountable and you know the date it's mm -hmm. got to be done by they're simple things mm. when we start talking about processes in a business in a family business the processes can say well that's not the way i do it and and you get emotional about well i don't like that person doing it because they might break it or they might do it and damage something so it costs us more in the long term you know yes. so there's a lot of this if i do it and you do it when actually it's not about me or you it's actually about the process mm. so we need to actually remember some of these things yeah i just listen because i mean it's it's and those two in particular just caught my attention i'm going that that takes a certain time in the game if that's the right way of putting it to better have those to better pick up those subtle nuances sometimes sure where someone's fresh off the bat I mean, they miss it. It, it, hopefully have an agenda to work with. Because <laughs> how many times do I go into a family meeting and there isn't an agenda? We haven't thought mm. about it. Oh, we thought, oh, well, you were coming, so we just met with you. You know, yeah. the, oh, okay, so what's the purpose of the meeting? Again. We, we get it quite often here because people say, oh, you guys just sit down and have a chat. But we set an agenda. We sit down and talk what we're going to actually talk about, don't we? Sure. It might sound like a conversation, but we actually... We do actually have some structure down <laughs> So where do we do have an agenda too? I can tick that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, seating and positioning, we're actually sitting, positioning. Yeah. But if you've got 10 people in a family and there's yourself, mm. make a note of who's sitting next to whom and maybe the next meeting is at the same, exactly the same layout or a different layout. Uh, yeah. Because if the power has an influence, where does that move in the room? Um, the room conditions, air conditioning. If it's too cold, too hot, discomfort, people don't want to be there. Yeah. Um, outside noise is an influence. Sometimes meeting in coffee shops isn't necessarily conducive to having a family meeting. No. Um, it might be good for the person who wants to have that private chat with you, though, just away from the business. Sure. I'm sure you've had a, quite a few of them. 
I have a lot of coffee shop meetings. <laughs> We're probably not going to but, discover who with, but... <laughs> no, but it's amazing when you're really in a conversation with a family member and they're focused and you're focused on listening, yeah. you don't hear anything else. No. You really don't hear anything else. And an hour can go by mm. and you would not know whether you were in a coffee shop, whether you were in an aeroplane or whether you were driving your car home. Wow. John, do you find sometimes, and I know you structure your meetings to get the result you're after, do you find sometimes that by being able to take the family member away from the business, they feel a little bit more so in, the, in a public environment, there's a coffee shop, but there's, there's, they feel uh, more secure and more private. It's almost a... There's definitely a privacy part of it. Mm. Um, mostly we move away from the business mm. and from the home because they want neutral territory. So this memory, you know, I, the last point that I've got here, other than yeah. et cetera, um, <laughs> is, et cetera, is understanding of place. Oh. So when I call meetings, yes. I'm finding out where is the right place to have the meeting. Yeah. If the place is at work in the boardroom and somebody has a very unpleasant experience, that will colour that venue, that room, for that individual coming to it, may not want to come back to another meeting there. So mm. neutral territory could be an opportunity for somebody here. Yes. Wow. You know, and even families, when they do have get-togethers, you know, you remember so-and-so's wedding was at that particular venue, and I remember so-and-so's 21st birthday was at that venue. Oh, it wasn't a good yeah. night. We've never been back there, funny you should say that, you know? <laughs> so places have memories. Yeah. Do you think that applies uh, outside of family businesses as well, like a, a corporate business and a manager running, sure. sometimes it can be conducive for him to say, let's just go out and grab a coffee. Definitely, mm. definitely. And some people have their favorite coffee, sh coffee shop, you know. Yeah. Yes, the coffee's great, but the ambience is right. There's yeah. the lighting, the noise, the positioning, the seat they happen to get, they get the corner table every time. Yes. Sometimes you go to a coffee shop and there's a little plaque sitting up there, so-and-so sits there, so they, that's their spot. <laughs> that's their spot. And it happens. Yeah. It's really interesting because I, I, I wanted to cover that with you because your, your business is quite complex. Um, someone who's just running, like me running a business or I'm just running a business in a corporation, I don't mean it's simple, but it is simpler that the dynamics, I get to know them, whereas yourself, the dynamics change because every business is, every family is different. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a family business, but it's actually families that are in business, yeah. which, see, I have learned, I have listened to. Yeah, it's you good. all these dynamics yeah. going on. And I just thought a normal business owner can learn so much from just the different strategies of what you're talking about, and especially that little checklist. I'm glad you wrote it down. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not total. It's reasonably comprehensive. Yeah. Um, and yes, he did write et cetera on the bottom because <laughs> it keeps going. And you don't know. You're going to have meetings with accountants, with lawyers, with other financial advisors, with other professionals. So you're going to have lots of meetings. It's part of being in business. Yeah. So come back to the purpose. What are you trying to achieve? And in most cases, I'm trying to learn. I'm also trying to share education and trying to move those people that haven't moved for a long time Mm. Move them through a change process that will be a positive process for them. So you design your meetings so you can achieve those goals. And someone watching is going to be saying, you really need to design your meetings so you can achieve your goals. So you have to kind of know what they're going to be, don't you? Generally, it works that way. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, it works that way. I'm and really conscious of your time. The only thing yeah. is that I wrote down here is yes. it's a journey. Yeah, that's interesting. I was actually glancing. I couldn't quite read it because it's upside down, but you've highlighted it. So it's a journey. Yeah. So is that telling me patience is perhaps a virtue in this one? Very definitely. Working with a group of people in a family business, because it's a journey and we're all going on the journey together, understanding that some people will travel a little quicker yeah. than others. We need to be a little bit tolerant, not expecting great change, great movement in one big bang up meeting we've got yeah. we've solved the problems of the world it doesn't happen that way no well john i am very conscious of time i'm actually watching the clock because i know you've got to go you've got an early start you've got early morning meetings then off to chicago i can't wait till you get back maybe you can get some uh, some talks with while you're in chicago with a few of the other advisors i think that'd be great we'll yeah, see absolutely. what i can do fantastic thanks for joining us john thanks for coming in i really do appreciate it thanks michael